OK, I would like to remind everyone of some of the instructions included in the remote meeting protocol. Everyone will be muted and if you are asked to speak, you unmute yourself, speak and mute yourself again when you are finished. If you have a question, press the virtual hand on the screen and the chair will invite you to speak one person at a time. Please do not begin speaking until the chair invites you in. If you have a comment to make, you should only raise the symbol of a hand when the chair asks for comments. And again, you will be invited to speak one person at a time. If for any reason a member has cause to leave the meeting, then they must indicate this to the chair before leaving. Please raise your hand or send a message to the online chat. OK, it's gone 4.15. Uh, can I please ask all officers and guests to turn off their cameras? You should turn on your camera and microphone when you speak, but please turn them back off again afterward. Um, Democratic services have started the recording. OK, Pranamda. Please note that today's meeting is being recorded and may be broadcast via the authority's internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the authority. Bear with me now. Okay, agenda item number one, apologies for absence. No apologies for absence have been received, Chair, but I understand that Councillor David Jones is having problems accessing the meeting. OK, um, hopefully David will be able to uh, join imminently. Um, agenda item number two, declarations of interest. I don't think we've had any, Michelle, have we? OK, and agenda item number three, children's play areas and playgrounds. This report, I think, is going to be presented by uh, Robert Barnett and um, Robert, if you want to come in and give a, a brief uh, a brief outline, members uh, members should have uh, will have read the, the report. Before you start, I'd just like to say that when when members start moaning about the, the lack of money being put into playgrounds and that sort of thing, they're not having a moan at you. Obviously, it's not officers that um, uh, it's not officers like yourself that uh, that say how much money can be spent on things. It's down to elected members on and how much uh, is put in the budget for these sort of things. Thank you, Robert. OK, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I trust that committee members will have read the report. This report highlights the state of our fixed play provision at present and hopefully gives committee members the information required to make informed decisions or to stimulate further questions. In 2021, an independent report highlighted the sites which were in need of replacement or removal. Many of the council's fixed play areas are in need of refurbishment, with some of them reaching the end of their lifespan. As a non-statutory service, it has, in recent years, been neglected for sufficient capital investment, and as such, we have arrived at a position where we have some difficult decisions to make. The recent pandemic has shown us the importance of free at the point of access facilities and the contribution they make to our health and well-being, especially when other means of physical play and exercise have been eroded. More than one in four, four to five year olds are overweight or obese in Wales, that's 27% compared with 22% in England. We currently have 53 fixed play equipment sites spread throughout the county borough and if as an authority we agree that the current level of provision should be maintained, then capital funds will have to be allocated to enable a continuous rolling programme to be implemented. The attached appendices will indicate the current spread and levels of provision as well as lifespan and current vandalism hotspots. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you, Robert. Um, we'll go on to members. Clive Jones. Thank you, Chair. Um, I can ask my few questions together if it's possible. Um, Rob, could you tell the committee exactly what is the criteria uh, for carrying out the assessments as to which of these playgrounds are in the, you know, is it because of age or are there are a number of factors? Uh, currently, the, there's plans to refurbish four. Um, I, I think in this current financial year. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So. How was the assessment carried out and is, is the same assessment going to be carried out for all the others 
um, you know, for the next X number of years? Yeah, well, the, the way it was done, um, we had meetings with the, the playground inspector and the fitter. Uh, obviously, they, they're all of an age where they could be chosen because they're all over the 15 years old and all, practically all of them are, are in need of some refurbishment. However, the way we prioritised it was on a health and safety basis. Um, so we looked at all the items of equipment throughout the sites and if uh, a particular site was losing so much equipment that, you know, there was very little left, um, th that was one of the sites that were chosen. So it, it was, it, firstly, it was based on health and safety grounds. So if that equipment had become unsafe or was due to be removed because of safety and we couldn't repair it any longer, those were the items that were picked and those were the sites that were picked. Age does come into it, but as I say, they're all over that age where we could be refurbishing them. So uh, it was done on a health and safety basis. Right. And on the health and safety question, um, and, and obviously that comes with age, the amount of risk that's um, on the equipment, um, surely that, that has to be taken into account as well? Yeah, um, rust is not necessarily uh, an health and safety issue um, in itself. Uh, however, if the corrosion has um, sufficiently uh, deteriorated the frame and its strength and structure, then obviously we will uh, uh, remove it. But um, rust in itself is not, not a right. great issue. Okay. Um, right, can I take it to the report itself now? Um, under 5.4, um, and that's in in relation to uh, the courts for the for the four uh, uh, going to be dealt with immediately. Yeah. You say the four companies are approached to provide court for each site. Two companies return designs. The other two companies did not return due to high demand in the sector currently, and that the neighbouring authorities also invest in heavily in children's play areas. So I think you've allocated 280,000 quid for four sites at 70,000 pounds a piece. Um, are you anticipating that the tenders coming in, are it going to be in that area or less or, or more? And, and at what stage are we with the tenders for those particular four that you've got there? Right, the, the tenders, they won't come in um, above that level, because we've we've specified the the sort of level of provision. I haven't given them a cost, obviously, but the the level of provision is specified. So all the quotes that uh, we are back in were under the or just under the threshold. Um, the and where we are at the moment, the all the quotes have been received. Obviously, as I said, there was only two companies tendering for uh, the works. Um, I've had information back off all the ward councillors in the affected wards, and um, we've actually given the the letter of intent to the companies. So um, basically, they have been ordered, and we are told that the installation will be done before April next year. Right. Okay. Um, and. Next paragraph down, it's um, or next but one down, 5.6 vandalism. Um, you've got there some sites are more prone to vandalism than the others. It's difficult to pinpoint the reasons behind this, but can be down to suitability of location, local demographics, or deprived um, neighbourhoods. Um, I'm going to ask you a few questions on Appendix 1 uh, in a moment. So that goes down to individual sites. But if you're spending £280,000 and uh, it's going to be on, for sake of argument, a few of these sites where there's been vandalism over the years, how are you, as an authority, are we going to uh, safeguard that amount of money being spent uh, and not being, you know, perhaps equipment, new equipment being put there? And then vandalism still continues because it's it's a hot spot. 
Yeah, that's a, a very good question. Um, and I think that that'll come out of the, the consultation going forward. For instance, the St. John's Grove site is the, the most heavily vandalised. Um, if it was me, I would be recommending that we don't replace in that particular area because some of the areas, they are, uh, they lend themselves to vandalism, they secluded um, and, and, you know, they, perhaps some of the choices that we made in the past weren't that great. I think we should review those particular sites and maybe look for different locations. Um, and obviously, the more rundown a site gets, that seems to encourage vandalism. You know, if, if, if all the sites were brand new, uh, repainted, etc., vandalism tends to drop. Uh, so the, the more... Um, vandalized and deprived the area looks it, it's sort of a like an attraction and it's uh um it, it snowballs yeah because uh, on the list of vandalism you got st john's top of the uh all the all the lists of uh those are, those are vandal vandal yeah. vandalized reader car skate park is another one um uh, and we have discussed that in the pre-meeting because I think there's plans possibly that that could be cited elsewhere, perhaps closer to the leisure centre itself. Um, now, I've, as as all members do, we we see some of these sites uh, in the wards we live in or even elsewhere. Um, and I've been down at the Reedy Car Skate Book. You know, the, it, the, the, it's lit, um, but. It's away from the, the leisure centre, so it's it's currently difficult to, to monitor that site, um, and I presume that's the main reason or one of the reasons why it's been likely. I don't know. It's possibly been moved from there. Yeah. Well, one of the proposals is to move it closer to the the leisure center only probably about 20 or 30 yards um which would mean sort of re remodeling the car park and removing some trees um that's not a definite at the moment it was only um a proposal we, we've had one meeting on site but that it it would definitely help uh the issue and uh, although it's quite high up on the list of vandalism. Vandalism includes, you know, graffiti, etc. And that site, um, yeah, the type, the type of users, they do tend to graffiti. So it's yeah. not, it's not a, it's not one of he heavily vandalized sites really. But there yeah. are graffiti and things, and they do uh, set fire. You know, um, they got a little youth shelter there. They do have, yeah. you know, little bonfires and things. So it's it's not uh, it's not badly vandalised in itself, but yes, you know graffiti and things and and that type of thing goes on. Before we come to the vandalism report, I, I finished on the main report, and it's on seven two on page six, and you've got there uh, what, what is under the heading what we need to do next: reevaluate the current level of provision based on census information and analysis of areas of local population growth caused by new housing developments, using the fields and trust guidance to outdoor sport and play, current provision can be compared with the recommended minimum standards. Um, other figures for the, cens the, the census, which we held earlier this year, are they available to you now or not? I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't think the the last uh, census information is available yet. But, but whatever the, the latest information is, we will obviously base it on, on that. Um, the, the Fields in Trust guidelines, it used to be called the, the six acre standard. Um, what they say, there should be six acres for every thousand people. Uh, so we can compare our provision against their recommendation. It is only a recommendation and many authorities don't actually hit the mark, uh, but it gives you some indication of where we are in that sort of provision. Yeah, it would be sensible, I presume, because uh, as soon as the census is finished, people are working on all the data there because um, there's masses of data that come out from there are used for planning uh, purposes. Um, so obviously that's bang up to date, um, yeah. and 
it, it includes the fact that the population in Merthyr Tydfil, we know, has increased in the last 10 years and is due to increase again. That's the uh, that's the that's the suggestion that in the next few years it, it's still going to go on increasing. So it seems sensible to yes. look at those figures and do what you need to do from there. Uh, can I take you to the vandalism report? Um, sorry, the the playground assessment summary as on appendix one, um, and you actually um, stated there particular ones, there's about five or six, where it says, um, for example, the one in St John's, you put down your poor location, suffers from vandalism, and you've already said it, that that is a no-goer to keep it there. So I presume you'll be looking for another site within the ward, for example, to replace it. Is that what you tend to do? Possibly, but, but it, you know, it, it might come out once we do the um, the analysis. They may have enough provision in Penara. I'm not saying that's the case, but we'd have to look at it on a site by site basis. So although I said that shouldn't be replaced, that doesn't mean to say we should look for another area. Um, but yes, you know, ultimately we, we would be looking for for areas to replace. But um, in Pendara, it's, it's very difficult. Right. And the total number you got on there is 51 sites, but they they're not all directly managed by MTCBC. Um, am I right in saying there's a few of them that come under Merthyr Valley Homes? Uh, this, yeah, the skateboard, for instance, is um, a Merthyr Valley Homes site. Uh, we manage it for them on their behalf. Um, or oh, there's one down read the car. Yes, yeah. That, I never knew that. Yes, uh, not Merthyr Valley Homes, sorry, the Leisure yes. Trust. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, there are other sites. Um, which are managed by Merthyr Valley Homes. Well, I'll give you an example. There's one there, 24, uh, that's Skethy Dig, and it says closed due to safety issues, potential for possible MVH funding. Yes, I, I believe that uh, Merthyr Valley Homes are looking into um, some grant provision, and if they can obviously fund a new site there, um, it would take the burden off of the local authority. So if we can sort of hand over provision to the likes of Myth Valley Homes, then I think we should explore that. Right. Um, I, it, well, there's, there's one down here in Shindrig, that's the last one. Currently MTCBC, potential to asset transfer to MVH. Yes, yeah. So if that happens, that'd be another site which will be taken out of the direct responsibility for, um, the, you know, maintaining it. Yeah, that's correct. Um, and on that page, last page of page 11, it, it's got site name Kilhile, um, poor site topography and access issues makes it a difficult site to develop, steep slope, recommend removal and recite into a more suitable location. So amongst other things, it might not necessarily be vandalism, which would be the cause of removing um, this, um, that's clearly, as you stipulated there, um, pretty unsuitable. And I, for example, um, it's it's up a steep, very steep hill. Yeah. Uh, is it is it well used, for example, because of where it is? Um, yeah, indication is that, that it is quite well used. However, because of the slope, and the nature of play equipment, um, you, you need to have a, a flat area uh, for the safety surface and et cetera, especially if you've got rotating items. Um, and it's very difficult. The last time we did it in the 90s, we had to create some plateaus, yeah. which are then um, difficult to maintain in the future. You've got to try and you know cut the grass on these steep slopes around the, the items of equipment. So again, th that would be another site where, if it was my recommendation, I would say we wouldn't replace one there, but we should look somewhere else within the ward to you know put another site. So you've got 51 sites there, uh, four go to be done, that's down to 47. And, and with issues there of 
um, taking sites out, possibly, I don't know, in one or two cases, not replacing them at all. Others that may well be taken over by um, Merthyr Valley Homes. Uh, and there are one or two there that you do work for on behalf of Merthyr Tidville Ledger Trust. Does the issue of the number of years, could we talk about, I think, 13 years before we do all these? In what I've just said, and it depends on the on the amount of finance available, is it possible that that 13 years is likely to be condensed into a lesser number of years so we get to these sites that need work on earlier? Well, that would be an ideal situation. Um, you know, as I've said in the report, ideally we should have an accelerated capital programme to enable us to do far more in the, the early years. Because if we wait for uh, the, on the current um, levels of provision, then it would take us 13 years to get to the last one. Well, as you said, those, those sites are not going to last another 13 years, so a lot of those would have to be removed prior to that. So we should, in theory, have a, an accelerated capital program to enable um, more sites to be refurbished, and then have a, an annual allocation. You know, uh, and we could keep the the playgrounds in a, in a far better state. One last question, Chair. Um, I know that uh, how often do your staff? We all get complaints about vandalism, which is all members passed on to officers. Um, how often do your staff um, monitor the, the playgrounds to see if everything's okay? Um, is that done, I don't know, annually or more often? No, it, it's we we have a weekly or fortnightly inspection, depending on the, the use. So the greater the use, the greater the risk, therefore the greater number of inspections. But uh, definitely at least one inspection every two weeks. That's by our qualified um, inspector. Um, and then we have um, a three monthly inspection, it's called an operational inspection, where um, it, it's a more in-depth inspection, you know, checking nuts and bolts and bearings and things. So that's done once every three months. And then we have an annual independent inspection from the likes of ROSPA. So we, we've got the, the visual inspection fortnightly or weekly. Uh, the uh, three monthly operational inspection and then the annual independent. So there's three levels of inspection which go on. Right. And I did list, you know, four being done uh, this current financial year, but there's there's a fifth which has just been done, and that's the one in my ward up in Cavartha Park. There's the um, you've uh, rejigged and put new equipment in there. That's on the list. So that's again, you know, one less to be done. OK, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Clive. Um, it's Phil Starr next and then uh, Councillor Lee Davis. OK, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Rob, it's, uh, it's, it's an observation really to do with Appendix 3, which I found uh, very useful. It's a chart showing playground provision. But my query is that the playground provision chart has a key near the top of it which refers to uh, R for refurbished, N for new, T to be refurbished, and D to be removed, uh, re presumably relating to current playground sites ward. And yet the actual list of the playground sites by ward underneath has no reference to those letters. So I was presumably, I thought this was going to be a, a chart which would at a glance show us what the current state of play was. If, if you get my meaning with state of play with regard to playground provision, and yet that key does not appear to be carried through to the chart, which I think undermines its usefulness. Yeah, I, that, that key, um, it, it's the report is derived from an access database, and that key was blanked out for the purpose of this report because the um, the information was based on the, the last refurbishment and, and not this refurbishment. So the, uh, the question of which ones we're going to do will be in the other appendix um, where we've made comments there, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, eventually once the, the study has been done, that key can be turned back on and reallocated and that will be, um, you know, fully keyed report. But yeah, 
Yeah, that that um, note on the top should have been taken out. That that is an error. Yeah, that, I think that would be my recommendation. Now that if this was available to anyone else outside yeah. this meeting, then that could cause a similar amount of confusion. So perhaps blanking out that particular key there at the top would be a good idea. Yeah, point noted. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Councillor Lee Davis. Uh, thanks, Chair. Um, couple of questions. Sill money. Do do we have any sill money that goes towards funding parks at the moment? Yes, the, there is uh, an allocation of sill money, and the, um, the the last playground refurbishment we did was in the shin rig, and that benefited from some sill money. So yeah, we do make um, applications through the process, the planning process. Obviously, there are there are lots of uh, people bidding for that. You know, same money, education, engineers, etc. But the the playgrounds are one of the eligible items to be, you know, um, funded. OK, yes. you know, if, if a, um, a development takes place in a ward, does that money go towards the development within that ward then? Or is it one big pot and then everybody bids into it? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to go into that ward. Um, it used to, under the old Section 106 agreements, which has sort of been superseded by SIL in a way, um, that was the case, and the developer had to produce the uh, provision on site. Uh, that that can still happen through the planning process, because if we've got a um, if the developer's got to uh, apply some playground or playing field or whatever, that can be part of the planning process, and they can plan that in from from the day one. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, Silman E doesn't have to be used for that particular location. It can be used anywhere. Okay, thanks, Rob. Um, it, Clive, Clive touched on it earlier regarding um, uh, third-party parks. Do we have the likes of Merthyr Valley Zones? I think they have two within Gurness Ward, uh, Honeysuckle and Cherry Grove. Do, do we have a service level agreement to maintain those parks then, or do they, do they look after them? Uh, not a service level agreement as such. What happens is they've got their own inspector, so we don't do any of the the safety checks or inspections, they do their own. But if they do find faults, they do ask us to do some repairs, get some spares, etc. And then we charge them, you know, uh, on an ad hoc basis. There's no sort of service level agreement as such, but yeah, we, we do some work for them, yes. Okay. I, well, th th this is not really a question, I just uh, observation. They come to light with, with parks for me um, with regards to swing seats and dogs. Um, I don't know if you want to tell councillors what, what happens there, where, where they see a swing seat that's been vandalised or looks like it's been chewed. Yeah, um, unbelievably, some people train their dogs um, to bite the swing seats and then they, you know, the dog hangs off the swing because they are rubber based. I don't know why they use them, but um you know some dog owners they, they encourage their dogs to bite into the rubber and then they you know they pull the seat and they do um they do damage the the edges and once that damaged edge is exposed then we have to replace so we do go through quite a number of seats um yeah and, and a lot of it is dog damage unbelievably yeah i i believe it's down to dogs fighting and trying to strengthen their necks and their jaws and yeah that's right yeah, yeah. All right, that's that's all for me. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Lee. Any other councillors with questions? Clive. Well, it's just in relation to the last uh, question from Councillor Lee Davis. I'm I'm absolutely gobsmacked, frankly. Um, to what, in all these playgrounds. Do we do we generally allow anyone's dogs to be brought in there, or are no dogs allowed at all in any of the playgrounds? Well, particularly the ones that are fenced off. No, there, there are no dogs allowed. There are signs on every playground stating that, um, and most sites are fenced off with uh, self-closing gates, which you know should be dog-proof. But you know we, we don't enforce that, and people do take their dogs in. You know they they put their dog in there, um, and they do they they mess etc. And as we we previously said, they use them use the uh, facilities 
to train dogs and and that yeah but uh, no dogs allowed in playgrounds thank you for that uh, perhaps that message needs to be completely reinforced uh, because there's there's always the potential chair for accidents to occur when even when dogs are on leads with very young children around thank you thank you clive any other councillors no i've got a couple uh Robert, looking at Appendix 1, the playground uh, site at Getley Dig was closed due to safety issues and it had an estimated end of life marked as 2021. Um, why, when funding was made available for four sites, was this site overlooked when three of the four sites awarded funding had end of life dates of 2026? Because the there is potential funding from Earth of Valley Homes. So rather than use the council's allocation, um, spend that money on our sites and then if Merthyr Valley Homes get this funding they can develop their own on, on that site and also take the burden of maintenance from the authority as well. Okay when, when are we likely to hear back from Merthyr Valley Homes when, when they will spend or if they will spend that money and if they don't spend that money on it um, will will Swansea Road, will, will Getley Dig, will they be in the next round uh, say for next year to have their, uh, their park uh, refurbished? I would think it would be high on the priority list because obviously it's been um, closed for health and safety reasons and if Merth Valley Homes uh, don't get the funding or are not prepared to fund it then I think that would be one of the priority areas. Okay, uh, people at Swansea Road will be happy with that but th then it comes on to my next question. You said earlier that the level of provision was specified when asking companies to tender does this mean that if a playground needed more than £70,000 worth of refurbishment and new equipment in there, it would still only have £70,000 worth then? No, we bring it up to, sorry, to bring it up to a standard that it was originally at. Yeah, we, we've based, there are uh, standards for playgrounds, uh, laps, leaps and neeps, um, a leap, which is a local equipped area for play, which is what most of ours are, and, and a neap or a neighbourhood area for play would be something like the splash pad in Cabartha, so somewhere where you would actually drive to rather than walk to, it's not a local one on your on your doorstep. So the the allocation of funding was based on a leap, uh, a local equipped area for play. Um, like when we did the refurbishment in the 90s, a leap would cost around 25 to 30,000. Obviously that was a long time ago with today's uh, inflation and the price of materials, we've estimated that it's about £70,000 to provide a reasonable LEAP standard, which is something like 400 square metres, has a perimeter fence, five items of equipment, you know, with um, swinging, rotational, climbing, etc. So to meet all those criteria, and it's only our estimate, you know, it's not an industry standard, we could spend 200000 on each site. But for a reasonable provision, a local equipped area for play, we're looking at about £70,000. If you go less than that, yes, we could have done more, but the obviously the site is smaller then. You've got less equipment on. Perhaps then wouldn't meet the LEAP standard, uh, which is what we're aiming for. So, yeah, about £70,000 is the, the right level, in, in my opinion. And that's about the industry sort of standard. Okay, um, I was going to go on a bit in one of the questions, but if you're saying seventy thousand pounds would would be a reasonable standard for every playground, so you just multiply seventy thousand by however many sites are left. Uh, I forgot now to be honest, um, and that would be the capitals, uh, the, the capital investment required. So really in my in my opinion i think of the councillor's opinion that a 13-year cycle is not good enough so really if we want it done as soon as possible because as you said in the report that if we use that 13-year cycle then some of these playgrounds will be gone by then correct yeah okay um robert you you mentioned that some playgrounds may not be cited in the correct place and i think you said that this may be something that could be looked at in future have you, discussed, have you had discussions on this already? Um, or when are you likely to have discussions on this? And who, who will you be involved in that? Will it be residents and local councillors? 
Um, obviously, it would involve local councillors because it, it would be a, a big decision within their own ward to lose a particular site, especially if you weren't going to replace it. So we'd have to, you know, start that uh, negotiation pretty early on, I think. Um, and, and with the priorities, you know, um, discuss the priorities and replacements within each other's wards. Um, yeah, members of the public could be consulted as well. Perhaps we can get our corps, comms, people involved um, and do a, you know, um, online consultation. I, I'm sure though, any consultation about children's playgrounds, as, as you're probably aware, it's, it's, a, it's an emotive subject and um, people will always want more. You know, they, they want one on the on the bottom of the street. That That isn't always possible. So th there are going to be some difficult choices, as I've said. So, yeah, um, the consultation will have to be done. OK, lovely. Thank you, Robert. Um, Councillor Markham Colbran. Uh, I think Phil had his hand up before me. I don't know if he's got another question. Apologies, I should have looked at the list. Phil Starr, David Hughes and then Malcolm Colbran. OK, th thank you, uh, Councillor. Um, it's a sort I'll invert my invert a couple of my questions. The first one is relates to what you just mentioned about um, uh, about particular areas with particular playgrounds. I know from Appendix One that Plant Park was removed as a result of the A470 uh, reworking. Yeah. Are there any plans to replace the park in that area? Uh, and was the council compensated for the removal of that park? Yes, it was compensated. Uh, we actually had two new items of equipment uh, and the two nearest sites were um, Edward Street and the uh, the engine house or the, uh, the community centre in Dowlas. So we had two multi-units, one for the community centre and one for uh, Impant. That site, when the works has been completed, will be refurbished and that's all in the agreement. Uh, we'll have a brand new LEAP standard playground on that particular site when the uh, the roadworks are finished. OK, thank you very much. And, and the second point is you, know, you mentioned the ballpark figure of 70,000 as being the, um, the the equivalent funding to be spent on each of the park areas if, if, if needed. What determines the type of equipment that goes into a particular park and playground area? Is it is it is it is it a specific list of items that have to go into a particular park because from what I can see most parks have got different types of item so what is yeah. there a determination on what what goes in there? there there's no sort of guidelines on what you put in there but the, the the way they should be designed is that you have a range of um play items uh there is a calculation uh play value calculation and you, you should have, you know, like a rotating item, swinging item, uh, something to do with physical strength. So a climbing um, and sliding. So each one of those particular um, activities has adds to the overall play value. So, you know, if, you, if you've got one or two items, um, it should be, for instance, like a multi-unit where you've got yeah a slide, a climbing section and a rope bridge. So the play value is, um, you know, a calculation we use to, to look at what, what goes in it. But there, there are no guidelines, there are no rules to say you have to have a, you know, a roundabout or whatever. But um, we try to give a, a full range. OK, thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Phil. I think the Cabinet member, David Hughes, has got his hand up. Yeah, just a bit of information. I believe the money have been found for the one in Swansea Road. Uh, the Miss Valley Homes have agreed the money, I believe. Oh, lovely. Cheers, David. Thanks for that update. Um, Councillor Malcolm Colbrand. Yeah, thank you. Um, yes, Rob, although there's, there's 51 sites on the list, excuse me, I've got laryngitis. I hope you can hear me okay. Um, but not all of these need £70,000 worth of refurbishment, are they? For instance, you've got things like the Peddling, Peddling of Mugger on there, which isn't a, a playground as such. It's just basically a basketball court. So I, presumably there are other sites like that which aren't going to need this amount of money spending on them. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, they, they're not all uh, equipped or leaps, uh, local equipped areas to play. As you say, the, the muggers and things, um, they, they wouldn't be replaced. So that, that should speed up the process and 
yeah, there's not many of those on there. Um, and, and some of them, like the Dowless Top Stable site, now that was um, grant funded from SCANSA, I think, uh, and the Football Association of Wales. That was funded um, quite a while ago. Now that is in need of either refurbishment or removal. So there are sites like Muggers, which either need um, removal or replacement as well. And that could be more expensive than the £70,000, depending on uh, you know what type. Thank you. Um, I've got a couple of comments. Uh, take it. I don't know if anybody else has got any questions. I've got one on that, Malcolm, just uh, on your last one. Robert, how much uh, How much is the refurbishment of a mugger? I think there's three on the list. It depends on the size and it depends on the surface and it depends on the, um, the perimeter fencing, whether you have timber or steel. Um, you can have a tarmac surface or you can have a sand infill carpet. Um, I think the last one we did was in the Pond Stick area. That was a five-a-side uh, size. It had a steel fencing with a sand fill carpet. I think, off the top of my head, I think it was eighty thousand pound. And that was only a, that's a small site. A large mugger like the one in Taft Bargoy Park, you were probably talking, I don't know, um, hundred thousand pound, depending on again on the surface uh, and the type. Lovely. Thank you, Robert. Um, have councillors got any more questions? OK, we'll go on to comments. Uh, Mark, can we go straight to you because uh, you mentioned you had some comments. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, I say, sorry about my voice. Um, yeah, it's. It, I am disappointed that this hasn't process wasn't started many years ago and we've got in the state that we are. But now we've, we've arrived at the point that we are. I really welcome this and it's good to see that um, we are starting to refurbish these playgrounds. So I hope it then becomes a rolling cycle um, and that, you know, that they are all maintained to a reasonable standard in the future. Um, the, I'm particularly pleased that the one in Lewis Street, Bed Linong, has been replaced. As I say, it's in my own ward. Um, we were also lucky enough to have the last new playground, the one in the Shindling, replaced. Um, I'd like to thank you, Rob, for consulting with myself and Sherelle on, on both of these providing us with plans which are really exciting which we were able to sh share with the community and get and get feedback from them and, and get them involved so that was really good um play for children is, is something i'm really passionate about um and next to the lewis street um playground i run a games night in the summer on the on the field there and some weeks we have 60 70 children turning up um playing good old-fashioned play by using the playground as well. So it's a really used playground. Um, it is in a bad state of disrepair. Um, the parents tell me that they played on it when they were children and it was in a bad state then. <laughs> so it's really good that that's been refurbished. So thank you very much for that. OK, thanks. Lovely. Thank you, Malcolm. Malcolm. Uh, Clive? Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, unfortunately, uh, playgrounds, um, along with a lot of the services in leisure is not a statutory function and there lies an issue because over certainly since 2010 uh, there have been massive cuts with every local authority in the United Kingdom and you know with uh, everything that had to be done to renew re the finances of local authorities and Bertha Tidville was no exception. Um, we had to uh, look out the services were run, we had to reduce staff um, as a result of the cuts and consequently um, a, a lot of time had to be devoted to the statutory services to ensure they were uh, kept up uh, to a reasonable standard. Now that uh, our friend Mr Johnson and Co and 10 Downing Street um, have opened the uh, checkbooks and there's uh, the figure I've seen is two and a half billion extra funding coming to the uh, Welsh Parliament um, and we'll know what uh, that outcome is that. I've no doubt that politicians and civil servants 
down the Welsh Parliament, I've been looking at, at the fine um, small words that, that uh, come with these um, edicts about uh, the money to be spent, and clearly it'll depend what is stipulated from the UK government. But hopefully, um, if there is more money available to local authorities, we need to look at um, trying to bring down the time factor with this. I mean, 13 years is a hell of a long time to wait for a playground to be refurbished. After all, uh, Chair, the playgrounds are there for young children. Uh, there's nothing more pleasing to see um, youngsters, and I've got grandchildren um, to to use playgrounds. Uh, it's part of their upbringing and part of their healthy lifestyle. So we we hopefully, Rob, um, with everything that's being done there, we need to look at and see what can be done. Oh, I welcome the fact that um, four, well, five actually, with the uh, the work has been done in, in Kavartha Park, um, and that's been used now, uh, and the other four have been done in this financial year. Um, hopefully we can uh, try and ensure that the length of time that's needed currently is reduced. And um, I look forward uh, to that. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, Clive. Uh, Councillor Lee Davis. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, I'd just like to say welcome this report. Thanks. I'd just also like to thank Rob and his team for all his support in maintaining the parks. Um, we've had parks vandalised and they're always there. As soon as we, uh, we, re we report it, they're there straight away to, to remedy the issues whenever they can. Um, parks are, you know, we, we're quite lucky in Gurness where we, we have quite a, quite a number of parks and some of them are quite new. Um, they are really well used um, and in areas of high deprivation, these are godsend to our communities. So, you know, this this is an excellent report and uh, we look forward to having new parks right throughout the borough. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Lee. Um, Councillor Jeremy Davis. Yeah, I'd just like to echo what everyone else said. It's, um... I'm very happy with this report and I just hope we can take it forward and get these parks done in a number of years, not 13 years, because I know it's not um, statutory, but it should be, if you know what I mean, because obviously this is about the future generations and for, our, and for future kids and grandkids and and I, I think we 13 years is not good enough, we need to do it within a couple of years, otherwise these parks will be lost, but thank you for all the work you've done Rob. And because um, I know you've been brilliant up the Gurness Lower Park, so I thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Clive, is that a legacy? No, no, sorry, Chair. I, I forgot to mention two things. Um, one of which, uh, when I mentioned the cuts that have been taking place, obviously the department that Rob heads was affected as well over the years. Uh, so you 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 know we've all got to take into account that um, staffing has um, has been reduced uh, right across the, the board. The other thing, chair, is I think that um, I welcome the report and perhaps we should look to having a regular report in this scrutiny committee uh, and an update uh, as to where we are. Um, I would say certainly perhaps looking at it um, at least once a 12 month for the for that to be scrutinized by this particular committee yeah i agree i'm not sure we uh i'll be here but um i, I think it's definitely something to look at um anybody else got any uh comments okay i've got a couple um Similarly to uh, to Lee and Jeremy, I'd also like like to con congratulate Robert's team. You know, when I've had issues in in parks in Dallas and Pant, straight there. You know, it's a re really good team, uh, and thank you for that. 
Um, in a similar vein to other members, uh, my my real comment is uh, at six point three six point three in the report. It says under the current approach of refurbishing four sites per year, it will take the council thirteen years to refurbish the remaining sites. Many of these will not last that long, so will be lost as the equipment becomes too unsafe to maintain. Um, when, ta when taken into consideration, the Future uh, Future Generations Act, a 13 year, year plan just doesn't cut it, to be honest. And it's down to us as elected members to shape this council's future policies and future direction in regards to, in regards to playgrounds to make sure our children and grandchildren have the best facilities possible, uh, best facilities possible as soon as possible. And we need to start doing that when budgets have been discussed and voted on in the new year and during budget setting in following years for councillors who will be here. Um, we've all voted to bring extra staff into departments and roles that we're lacking. And we need to do exactly the same with playground facilities for uh, for, our, for our children and grandchildren. Um, I think that's the end of the comments. Robert, thank you very much for the report. Thank you very much for answering our questions. And thank you very much for the work you, uh, you've done and keep doing. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Um, thank you. I, th I think uh, you can go now if you want. Uh, and thank you very much. All officers and cabinet members can go as well. Um, I will go back onto agenda items. All right. Agenda item number four is the Committee Forward Work Programme 2021-2022. Right, there's a couple of reports. And the HWRC permits and booking systems was was due to come to scrutiny today, um, but it it's been decided that we, we're going to bring that back in uh, in in uh, in January. Um, also, bear with me now. It's Friday agenda. Also today, we were supposed to have the uh, trade waste recycling. However, Welsh Government have announced that they are delaying the introduction of that legislation to next year. Therefore, this report will be deferred until further notice as well. Um, so we come back on the 17th of January and that's going, we're going to have three uh, three items on it. The carbon management, decarbonisation. Sean, while I'm on that. Yeah. Um, I recently had a um, a meeting with uh, Audit Wales, um, and actually, I'll bring that up in. I'll bring that up later on. Sorry, I do apologise. Uh, right, we've got three items on the next one. We've got deca uh, carbon management, decarbonisation, grass cutting, and biodiversity. And then we'll have HWRC's permits and booking systems. So they're all coming in January. Um, we haven't got long left, to be honest, in uh, in our in our uh, in this cycle. So if anyone else has anything to bring, um, just send in your requests. Um, okay. Check. Can I yes. just bring up? Um, um to to the to the members that um whilst we've got three reports coming up or scheduled now to come up in january in the next um scrutiny after the 14th of march we've only got one um report on there at that present time which is the future reuse shop so i'm not sure whether you would like uh one of the reports scheduled for january to maybe go to march and then there's an there's one report then scheduled in April, so we do have a little bit of um, leeway at the end of the um, at the end of the the plans. But then again, as I'm saying this, um, in March we need to be aware. That I think we bring in or could it be asked that we could bring back the self evaluation report. Yeah, Sean, I'd, I'd also like to see um, a flight tipping report on as well, an update. If uh, will that come under us now, to be honest? Uh, we, I can request it, that's no problem at all. So, are we then saying that we'll keep the three reports for January? Yeah, we've got two reports for March, which would be the furniture reuse shop and the self evaluation report. And then would you like the fly tipping report to come in April with the fleet management? So there'll be two in April then as well. 
Yeah, I, I know flight tipping has gone to, um, a lot of it has gone to, well, environmental health has gone over to um, regeneration, but I still think flight tipping, a lot of it will will uh, will come under us. I, I would like a report before, um, before the end of the year, if that's okay. I don't know if members are in agreement. Well, yeah. we can look into it. We can look into it to see what what element um, that would relate to our area that you would like to see. But I I don't see Chair why we shouldn't be looking at flight tipping unless I've uh, mistaken. Um, have all the workforce to do with flight tipping and all that? Uh, I know that there's environmental health involved, um, but the workforce will go out uh, and, you know, the litter pickers, you see it day in, day out, seven days a week. Um, they still come under neighbourhood services, don't they? Well, there's a specific thing I want to bring to the uh, the next one, and it's flight tip. And on private land, what we're doing about it, how it's being done. Oh, and I, 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 I couldn't agree with you more, Chair. That and to be honest, been, I've had an issue lately that I want to uh, I, I want to raise. We, we've all had it. It's been a burning issue for years and years. And the sooner we crack that one, the better. It, it is. It's diabolical, frankly, that uh, we you know. And you can't explain this to the public. Um, and I try to many times, and it's really frustrating. You can see an area where there's litter picking need to be done right next to a piece of private land. And it, it can be, and I can give you examples in my ward, as all members can. But then we are told, ah, no, we can't step on there. Um, there's this issue and that issue. And I, I thought that the Welsh Parliament had... Um, it's clear this is a problem elsewhere. Um, I remember seeing something somewhere that um, the the legalities of that have been changed to give local authorities powers to step onto private land. Yeah. It's a real issue for us with, with wards that are on the common, Clive. It's, it's a nightmare dealing with it. And like you say, you just can't explain it to a resident that... But, uh, oh, so, yeah, that would be definitely something worth looking into. Yeah, so, one of the issues I've had is where are we with the council when we should be contacting the um, uh, the landowner to remove things? Um, but to be honest, I've had an issue in my ward and they haven't. They, they've, they've wrote a letter on a couple of occasions to the landowner, but haven't followed it up. You know, which is and and it looks bad on on us as elected uh, members and then councillors as well, uh, and the whole council as well. Yeah, well, they they should follow it up, um, and obviously that's within our gift as elected members to keep an eye on officers uh, to make sure that matters are followed up. Um, but I agree with you entirely. This is a a matter that should be looked at. Uh, in in depth um, and trying to be so, sorted out once and for all. And if we do so, the message should go out clear and simple to all the landowners. We all know we can give examples where land that there's planning permission being given to build houses and whatever, and it takes years sometimes before that happens. And what what happens? The land accumulates everything under the sun that's thrown on there. Yeah. Sean? Yeah, I just wanted to um, follow up on what um, was, I think it was Councillor Jones, Clive. Um, I, I'm of the understanding that the um, environmental health, now that they've got fly tipping, they've actually got the members of staff as well. So it was the member of staff that went across that actually does the fly tipping. They got the um, the enforcement officer uh, and I think the admin officer as well. So I think the the, the kind of um, in the department, you know, that the, the, the whole thing has gone over 
my understanding is to regeneration. I think Paul Jones, he is where he used to um, head up that kind of service. I think that has gone over now to um, Sue, whether she's still a part of the council or, or retired or not, um, but he would have gone over to environmental health. Yeah, but Sue was finished with this and the authority, she's gone. But I see, don't see any reason at all, because we've discussed it in the past number of times, why fly tipping is not scrutinised by us. Yeah, no problem. As I said, um, I can speak to the chair um, and we can organise and you can let me know then what it, what it is the focus is and whether it be the fly dipping department or whether it be um, uh, the, the waste or um, litter picking or, or whatever the focus is that you want to look, we can we can sort that out uh, after the meeting and, and organise that for April. But clean, cleaning up flight tipping on private land should definitely be part of that report. OK, thank you. Sean, <clears throat> sorry as well. One other thing, I, I know that um, coming soon, to the next uh, in January is carbon management and, and uh, decarbonisation. Now, back in July, we had um, asset management um, brought to the committee. And to be honest, looking at that, looking at going back on that report, um, it gave uh, an outline of exactly what's under corporate asset management. But during but I, I, I didn't realise till afterwards, to be honest, until I met, was meeting with Audit Wales and kind of uh, looked at what they were asking under the asset management plan. It's not just the property we have and we're getting rid of, although that's some of it. To be honest, some of the things that were left off the reports, they were in the graphic, were 21st century schools, improving condition of schools, town centre regeneration, Kavatha master plan, uh, transport infrastructure, cemetery review, all of that, all of that was missing, to be honest, off the um, uh, off the corporate asset management plan. I wonder, can we have that report coming back, maybe April or something like that? As because only a, only the one little piece was in it, and that was proper the property management. What we do with our property, a, a, a load of it was left off. And it all falls under the uh, corporate asset asset management plan. Yeah, so we'll be looking at three then, possibly in April. All right. Okay. Hold on. So that will be the fly tipping, the um, the one that's scheduled already, which is the future, the furniture review shop. I think uh, what we requested there was an update on the opening of the furniture reuse shop. Um, the, the committee is keen to identify the benefits of the shop um, offers, identify the benefits the shop offers to the residents of the county borough, including figures on items provided. Um, that was what we had originally on April. Well, I, I think it, in, in March, the furniture reuse shop is on. Yeah. And it's just the one fleet management is in April. Can we, because fleet management would come, come really come under, um, would, would come under the, um, uh, what I've just talked about, the um, corporate asset management plan, because that would yeah. come under decarbonisation and that sort of thing as well. Yeah. Would I be right? Yeah, sorry. In March, we'll be furniture review shop and we're looking to also put on the self-valuation report. Yeah. And then in in April, it would be the fleet, the fly tipping that we've just discussed and the other areas of the asset management plan that wasn't already reported on previously. I wonder so maybe that might be it might be too much. There's a big, big report that would be and maybe this might be a recommendation, to be honest, for the next chair. The next. Of neighborhood. Yeah, maybe. I can, I can you'll still be here. At the bottom of the report. Yeah, um, no doubt I will still be here. Yes, um, I don't know what that's. <laughs> so it would be obviously for the members of of the new cycle, um, but but clearly we can put it down as a as a point to note there. Obviously, it would be up to the chair 
um, whoever the chair is, but it, it's a recommendation maybe. Um, Clive? Yeah, so, so that I get it clear, because um, I've got furniture reuse here on the 14th of March. What are the other items that would definitely be put on there now? It's in March it will be the self-evaluation. It will be the annual self-evaluation for the neighbourhood services. Remember, we had three questions for self-evaluation. Aye. So, for example, the, the issue about flight tipping, is there any reason why that can't go on the 17th of March and this evaluation report in April? Um, theoretically, it would be better for the self-evaluation to go in in March only being is that um, the self-evaluation then becomes a part of the annual performance report of the council. So we're looking to have all the self-evaluations um, come in eight, well, March time if possible. So the council then can report on its self-evaluation corporately. Yeah, I understand that, but the performance report is not presented to council until much later in the year so it doesn't matter in my opinion whether you do it in March or in early April then there's that's up to the members yeah yeah I don't mind bringing it uh, bringing that in in March Clive that'd be great yeah in April no I think you March. talked about the flight tipping in March and you flight 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 in March sorry. and now the self version in in April yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry yeah okay <laughs> Thank okay. You. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> um, okay. Agenda item number six, reflection and evaluation of meeting. Um, I think a lot of members have said it's not quite good enough, to be honest, with uh, you know the state of our playgrounds, and, and we really need to, to look at it um, to make them all as good as possible, as soon as possible. I don't know if anyone else wants to uh, bring anything in. Nope. OK. Um, agenda item number seven, any other business team urgent by the chair? I don't have any. Um, so I formally declare this meeting closed. Thank you very much, thank everyone. You, chair. OK, thank you very thank much, everyone. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, chair. Thank you, chair.